Hello everybody and welcome back to this week's edition of the Weekly Pools. These are my pools for the week of May the 12th. My name's Derek. I got two quick ones I'm going to go over with you real fast. I don't have a whole lot to say. Geiger number two, I didn't even read it yet and I'll tell you why. I did not have a pull list when issue one came out and when I got to my shop that day they were completely sold out. So I haven't even got to read issue number one yet. But Geiger's so popular, it's getting a third print, and it comes out next week. So next week's video, I'll just talk about Geiger as a whole, issue one and two, and I'll let you know how that is. Next, I have Silk number three. If you remember my review for Silk number two, I didn't have a whole lot to say about it, and I don't really have a whole lot to say about this one either. It's just, some people probably like it. I personally don't. I really don't want to go into detail as to why or why not, so I'm really not even going to talk to you about Silk. All right, now on to the good stuff. The first comic I want to talk to you about today is Giant Size, Amazing Spider-Man, number one, King's Ransom. This book marks the end of the King's Ransom story arc, and as I predicted last week, it's much better than issue 65. This issue picks right up after issue number 65. Peter's trying to convince the New Avengers to help him find Boomerang. The New Avengers don't trust Boomerang because, you know, he's typically a villain and Spidey is oh so certain he has turned his ways. J. Jonah Jameson hosts the first live uh, Threats and Menaces event. Not really that big of a deal, but it was kind of cool. Spidey does take off the new suit and he ends up back in his traditional red and blue which I'm pretty happy about. The new suit was cool but nothing beats the classic. There is some great fight scenes in this book, some nice good splash pages going on here. There is a lot of villains in this book. As you can see there's Shocker, Hydra Man, Black Cat makes an appearance. Black Cat has her own series going on right now. I'm not currently reading it from what I've read from the critics. It's actually pretty good. I will say all in all this issue was a little boring at times, but it's had to build it up to get to the final conclusion. At the very end, there is a reincarnation. I'm not going to spoil it for who you think it is. Wilson Fisk is trying to revive Vanessa. Does he? I don't know. I'm not going to tell you, but you got to pick this up if you want to know. This marks the end and a new beginning leading up to Sinister War this July. Giant Size the Amazing Spider-Man. Check it out. All right, guys, next up I have a pull that's not a physical pull. It's a Comixology original digital story. This series is called Hailstone. As you can tell from the cover, it's a Western, and I really love Western. It's one of my favorite genres. However, this is a nice mixture of Western and horror and mystery. We really don't even know what's going on. Sum up the plot at the very beginning of the book. People are going missing in this small town. It's set during the Civil War time. This young daughter and her mother are out rummaging for food. The daughter goes missing, and this is, she's not the first person to go missing. It's been happening. People are concerned. They're scared. There's a Union Army uh, supply factory in the town, and people are becoming weary of the Union Army. They think they might have something to do with it, and that's where Sheriff Denton comes in. Sheriff Denton believes the captain and the whole Union Army in this supply factory are hiding something from the town. Sheriff Denton and his team end up going into the woods and looking for the girl. I'm not going to tell you anything else after that. Download Comixology and read this. It's a really fun story. I have high hopes for this. If you like a good mystery, a good western, a good horror story, this is it. Hailstone on Comixology. Next up we have issue two of Image Comics's new horror lineup. We have The Silver Coin number two. Now this is kind of like those Marvel Black, White, and Bloods that I've been talking about. Every issue is going to have a different creative team. This issue features Kelly Thompson and Michael Walsh. And my gosh, let me tell you, this issue was fantastic. This is horror at its peak, you guys. I absolutely loved issue number one. It sold out before lunchtime. This issue sold out as well. It's great. The silver coin itself is this demonic, cursed coin, and whoever's picking it up it's pretty much ruining their lives in a pretty horrific, gory way. The first issue, it was a kind of like a rock star story, and he really wanted to be good at guitar. This issue, we have the main character, Fiona. She's probably a 10 to 12 year old girl, and she gets sent to a summer camp. Fiona is obsessed with horror films and slasher films, and she shows up to summer camp, and she's kind of disappointed that everybody's happy and it's cheery. Following a traditional summer camp story, plots, so to say. 
sitting around a campfire. There's one mean girl, and she starts telling a crazy story of some serial killer that lives in the woods trying to scare everybody. Then as the story progresses, Fiona, she's getting bullied by everybody. It's pretty bad. Um, at one point, she gets all of her hair chopped off, and that's what draws the line for her. And then she runs away into the woods, finds an Evil Dead-inspired cabin in the woods, and there she finds the coin. And I'm not going to tell you anything else that happens after that, because that will just tell you the whole story. The silver coin's really good. If you love horror, if you love a good story, pick this up. Every single issue is going to be a new story with a new creative team. I really love the art in this book. It really gave me a 80s, 90s horror film vibe. The whole book itself was creepy. I loved it. The silver coin, pick it up. All right, you guys, last up, my pick of the week. We have a Marvel title, Spider Shadow number two. Man, what a great book, you guys. This is the next big Marvel story. If you ask, want my opinion, this is the best Spider-Man content on the shelves right now. It's a what-if series. What if Peter kept the symbiote and became Venom himself? Wow, I did not expect this book to go that far that quick. This issue picks up right where issue one left off. Spoiler alert, at the end of issue one, the Hobgoblin kills Aunt May, and Peter takes it among himself to kill the Hobgoblin. Snaps his neck like a glow stick. It was pretty brutal. This picks up right there at the end of it. J. Jonah Jameson's running in the paper that Spider-Man's a killer and he's a menace. And it's kind of ironic because before he was doing that anyway, so it's kind of almost like a you get what you wish for right? So in typical Spider-Man fashion, he would ignore these newspapers and just continue to be a hero. Not in this case. Peter gets pissed, shows up to the bugle, breaks Jameson's hands, and he tells him, quit running these papers or I'm going to come back and kill you. Venom is truly taking over Peter fast. The Fantastic Four, they are very worried about him. If you go back and read the original content when he had Venom first, Reed Richards is the one that got it off of him, and Peter in issue one declined his help, and they're all very concerned. I really hope in later issues, I hope the Fantastic Four and Spider-Man fight. I think that would be really cool. We have a nice fight between Peter and Scorpion. It's I love the art in this book. It's really good. It's really smooth. I really, really love the character design for Spider-Man in this. I love his mask that they're giving him. He just, he looks scary. He's so scary that the villains, such as Wilson Fisk, he's concerned for his life now. Because before it was always, oh, Spider-Man doesn't kill anybody. Spider-Man just, he's going to throw us in jail and we'll get out and we'll just keep doing what we're doing. Now they're all scared because Peter has snapped. He's willing to kill the villains now. I'm not going to tell you what happens because you have to pick this up. Peter's pretty much lost that moral compass in this story and I'm living for it. We don't get this side of Spider-Man very often. He's a very tried and true, by the book type of hero. And with this what if, they're exploring the complete opposite. And it's a lot of fun. This book is hot right now. I showed up at my local comic shop and thank God I have a pull list because it was sold out. This book is hot. Issue number three comes out on June the 9th. Guys, if you're not reading this, you need to get on this. This is a great series from Marvel and my, one of my favorite writers, Chip Zdarsky. Spider-Man, Spider-Shadow, pick it up. This concludes this week's video. It was kind of a slow week for me. Next week, I'm probably going to break it down into two videos because I have seven books coming out, including one that's a volumized edition of Homesick Pilots. My buddy Tom, Tom, we love you, man. He's recommended Homesick Pilots to me and everything that I've read about it. It looks like it's going to be pretty good. Next week is a pretty even split between my Marvel titles and my independent comics. It's going to be a really good week, you guys. Tune in next week. Thanks for watching.